And welcome back. This is Joe Rebello here with uh, Martial Arts Today Television, and we're here with our guest today, uh, Sensei Ken Schiff for Schiff's Karate and Fitness, located in Freetown, Massachusetts. And uh, Sensei Schiff, it's a pleasure meeting you, sir. Thank you. Nice to meet you, Sensei. Uh, I wanted to talk to you about your martial arts career and also with the general public regarding your career and to educate them a little bit about the particular discipline that you study. Uh, the first question I ask all my interviewees is, how did you begin in the martial arts? I, as a youngster, 12 years old, saw some karate on television and being the insecure youngster I was, was very attracted to it. Well, you know, I, I definitely can relate. I'm, I, too, as a, as a young boy growing up, um, dealt with a lot of self-esteem issues. And, uh, you know, children are children sometimes. And children can be cruel and would be picked on. And that's what really got me involved in the arts. Now, um, back when you were originally studying, um, what was the first art that you studied? What was the discipline you learned? The very first discipline was Weichi Ru, the style of Weichi, a, an ancient uh, Chinese Okinawan art that originated in China but traveled to Okinawa by a man named Kombun Weichi. He studied in China for 10 years and then brought this art to his home, Okinawa. Oh, excellent. Now, in regards to Weichi, who was your first sensei or teacher that you first studied with? My very first teacher was George Matson. Uh, sensei George Matson was the first American to introduce Weichi in the United States. He was my very first teacher, and he is the man that is responsible for bringing out the teacher in me. Because at that very young age, after about a year of study, he began to let me help others coming in the door. So it brought about an immediate awareness of my love for teaching. Uh, now my current teacher is my very dear friend and second teacher, Bob Campbell. Uh, Bob Campbell, uh, we see him every year. He is in Hong Kong, and he has taught me so much about the arts, but so much about how to be a martial artist in life and be a person that my first thing, my biggest enjoyment is helping others grow with this Weichi art. And I give that to Bob Campbell. He really has brought that about over many years. Wow. Well, uh, for our general public, uh, George Matson, as, as was mentioned previously, is the person who brought the art of Weichi Ru Karate uh, to the United States, um, specifically to the New England area in Massachusetts and the Rhode Island area as well. Uh, now, he brought it into, I want to say he brought the art to the New England area back in the late 50s to early 60s. Now, what year did you start studying with, uh, with uh, Matson Sensei? Sensei Matson began uh, in Boston in 1958. I began studying with uh, Matson Academy in 1967. Now, where were they located back then? Uh, I started at the Hancock Street Government Center area dojo. Ah, so that was, again, the original dojo, right, because 1966. Yeah. You were very fortunate because, really, you started out on the ground level yes. in relationship to the history of Weichi in New England and in the United States. I, I am very fortunate. Now, uh, while we're on the topic, let's also talk a little bit about Bob Campbell. Uh, Bob Campbell is renowned throughout the Weichi Ru com uh, community, uh, not only for his study of Weichi, but also other Chinese martial arts. I remember in the 1970s, there was an article in Black Belt Magazine talking about Bob Campbell and not only his, uh, his work in relationship to Weichi, but also his study of traditional uh, kung fu systems. I remember at that time, he was studying the Walam kung fu system, Master Chan Poi. And he was also very much involved in the Chinese community and is also very proficient in his ability to, uh, to speak Mandarin, if I'm not mistaken, and also Cantonese. Yes. And many times would act as an interpreter or assistant in regards to several matters in the Boston Chinatown yes. area. Now, um, you mentioned about your love for teaching, and uh, obviously because of that love that was initiated at the original dojo for teaching in the Boston area, um, when did you decide to open up your own dojo? I had taught, uh, been teaching for many years. I would teach at a school that Sensei George Matson would have. I taught at other locations on my own. I worked with uh, challenged uh, youngsters. I've worked with... Uh, adults uh, on a private basis with a variety of challenges. I've worked with very athletically gifted mm -hmm. as well as those that are not gifted that way. 
And uh, I, I actually uh, opened my own school, not traveling martial artists, so to speak, about 10 years ago. Excellent. It's been about 10 years. Now, uh, again, I, I, we should mention that you really are the, the premier dojo in the uh, Freetown area. Thank you. And, uh, you know, it was really a joy, as you'll see in, uh, in the upcoming footage in today's episode, uh, seeing that your, your viable work with, uh, with children and adults uh, through the Art of Weichi. And I, what I really found refreshing in relationship to your approach, uh, normally if you go to a quote-unquote traditional karate dojo, um, you'll see everybody's dressed in a white gi, everybody's doing the same, everybody, you know. And, but I found in your dojo, I found that, that not only did, was there a sense of camaraderie and friendship there amongst the students, but also a use of individuality. You saw different students with, with different uniforms. You saw um, a much more relaxed atmosphere. And uh, you also saw a, a very positive atmosphere that the children could grasp the concepts of what they were learning, but also in an atmosphere that really perpetuated their, their wanting to learn rather than be stuck in a, in a stringent, you know, military uh, atmosphere. Uh, my first question regarding that is what was your impetus to create a more relaxed atmosphere in regards to that do the dojo? Thank you for recognizing that because very simply, it's like a dry sponge. If you make that sponge relax, soft, with water, of course, it, it, it can receive more. In other words, I like to have a relaxed atmosphere so that you can better learn. I find that my youngsters coming in not being intimidated. Mm. I explain that you are a master karate student. And with a youngster, we talk about being a master karate student means that you are working to become the master of your mind and your body self-control, balance, timing, coordination, the ability to see something, take it in, and then copy it. We work on all those neurological pathways so that it then carries over into baseball, football, academics, the ability to focus, the ability to not let the mind wander and be able to concentrate, focus on the task at hand and not be distracted. And if I may go on, right. this all, of course, has a lot to do with self-defense, to not have preconceived thoughts about a situation so that you act in an inappropriate way, to not have preconceived thoughts, oh my God, what will I do? Rather, be able to clear the head a little bit and take what's coming in and have the fortitude to deal with it and control it to use it to your advantage. And that may be not just being confronted by a bully, but it also may be sitting down to do a math test and being able to say, you know, I'm going to do the best I can possibly do. And I know I feel good because I have prepped, prepared for this test as much as I can. And whatever happens will happen. I'm giving you a quick kind of a summary that's, of what I'm... It's an excellent, it's an excellent, it's an excellent understanding of what you do. And I, again, that was another thing I found very refreshing, that not only with the physicality of the martial arts in relationship to the class structure, but also your use of what I believe you refer to as the STAR program, and giving a, a, a student um, a particular question of the month or a particular topic of the month, I and I believe uh, this month's, uh, in, in relationship to our time frame that we're filming this particular show, uh, I, 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 how do I make... How can I be happy? How can I be happy? And, you know, it, it's such a simple life question, but when we really look at that as, as, as children, want to see, you know, wh how can I be happy? How can I achieve happiness in my life? And it's such an important feature in regards to, to becoming, as I mentioned earlier before, as we were coming down here, I said not only to become a black belt in karate, but really a black belt in life. And that's the key. What you just brought up the STAR program, we will sit the children down when they come in from age four right up to 17 years old. And I will say to them, what really makes you happy? And we talk about, can you see? Can you see? Can you hear? 
Do you know there are some children, some people that are not fortunate to be able to see and watch karate and learn or, or are not able to listen to music? So you should be thankful that you can see and be thankful that you can hear. And this is the kind of thing that we try to bring about. Yes, we feel happy when we get a present. We feel happy when someone tells us they love us and give us a hug, like our mom or our dad. We're happy also that we have a school to go to, not only to learn karate, but to learn math and English, and to be able to have a warm roof house to live in. And, I, and that's the important key, that not only being happy, but thankful for what's going on. And I should mention, regarding sight and hearing, um, the particular class I saw in the children's group, you have one child, at least one child that I saw that did have a hearing aid. And he said, I'm just thankful I can hear. And this, to think of something that we take as human beings for granted, that that child sits there and says, that's a gift, and I'm happy I can just have that basic ability that so many of us take for granted. Now, in relationship to your adult class as well that we'll be seeing, um, they do the traditional Weichiru curriculum of the various kata. Um, for our general public, can you explain to us what, again, we talked about a little bit of history, but what is the basic format of Weichiru? Okay, I just want to tell you what Ken Schiff does. I do not motivate extrinsically. I motivate intrinsically. The belt, that's, that's nice. It's fine. It's a nice goal. But we really talk about, think about how you feel today. Think about what you can do today. Could you do that yesterday? Could you do that a month ago? These are the kinds of things that are the very core of what we do. Looking at oneself and saying, I feel better than I did. And getting back to your question, I, I hope I'm not drifting. What we do with the adults is we're teaching the adults all about the ancient discipline of Weichi Karate. And that discipline is very much fitness, is very much relaxation. When we bow to walk on our dojo floor, I say, when you bow and step in here, everything from your day at the office is left behind. Exactly. It's gone. And when you're on this floor, I want you to get lost in Weichi Karate so that when you bow and leave, you're renewed, you're refreshed. And we work on joint mobility, flexibility, muscle elasticity and strength, coordination timing, that mental clarity, the ability, we call it in Japanese, it's called Mu Shin. Mushin. Mind of no mind. Clear your mind. I want Mu Shin. When we start doing our active meditation, which you'll see, our kata, the mind is clear. I don't care how tough a day it was. Clear the mind. And of course, the self defense and the sport aspect, which are small parts of what we do, because sure. it's a total picture, we address that too. And we have some adults that have competed in tournaments and done very well. My student, who you will see, Fred D. Cubellis, and he teaches with me. Uh, this student of mine has trained in the past. He was a boxer, full contact fighter, and trained in some Kempo and Taekwondo. So like Sensei Bob Campbell was one of the first to cross train. Oh, definitely. I, I have... Weichiru in New England, no doubt. No I've doubt had the, the opportunity with Fred D. Cubellis to bring some of that thinking in, too. So we have a lot of fun with a variety of weapons, with a variety of uh, fighting philosophy, and we had the uh, privilege and honor to have... Sensei Rebello, come in and introduce us to some of your exciting martial arts. And I think that's an important key in regards to understanding the, the joys of working uh, in your particular dojo, in your particular art, and your approach regarding your, your discipline. Thank you. That the fact that the students are having a, a wonderful time, they're enjoying themselves, uh, it's more than just simply this is a block, this is a punch, this is a kick. It's more about making a person not only a better martial artist, not only making them have a better ability to defend themselves, but really making themselves a better human being. Uh, in closing now, um, my question I always ask all my interviewees, what does the future hold for you and your training in the martial arts? Well, for me, uh, I'm 53 years old. 
So for me, I have found my life's, my reason for being on earth. And my reason gives me great joy, and that is to help others. And I do this through this great discipline. I have, if I can just be very quick, I have some youngsters, uh, seven, eight years old, with some serious issues, whether it's autism, Asperger disease, Tourette's, ADHD, that I have seen on a scale of one to 10 go, go from one to six within maybe a year and a year and a half. And then I get a call from a, their psychiatrist or a, a, a teacher or a guidance counselor telling me how this child has come along. And that is more than a million dollars in my hand. So I there think you know where I'm going to be go. until I'm 100 years old. That's the key. And you know, that was, that's what it's all about in the martial arts, learning to to um, not only learn within yourself, but to assist others, helping them, as we mentioned before, not only become better martial artists, but better human beings. May I say one thing quickly? Parliament. I've had some adults who also give me pleasure, the adult population who have been chain smokers. And once they begin to taste the Weichi Karate and the self-discipline it develops, the cigarettes went out the door. So we address everybody. That, and that's the key, you know, whether, whether it's um, overcoming life challenges, whether it's overcoming various addictions, no matter what it may be, uh, you as an individual can gain a great wealth of information and a great wealth of self-gratification and enjoyment through the study of the martial arts. Sensei, it's a pleasure and an honor having you on our television Thank program. Thank you, Sensei. And we'll be right back with more exciting action here on Martial Arts Today Television. Stay tuned.
watch Ryan. Here we go.
Excuse me, Tyler. Tyler O'Reilly. Be next. Back in, Milton, quick. Milton, use your weights. Good kick. That's it, Patty Kay. Back in. Hands up. Milton, use your legs. Legs. That's it, Patty Kay. Okay, start. All right. Follow me. Follow each other. Keep your foot on. Sit down for a minute. Ryan and Matthew, come on. Right, ready? Now, Matthew, you know what you have to do, right? Hold it down a little bit. Ryan's getting more advanced, but hold it down. All right, blue belt? You ready? You ready? All right, go. Ryan, use your legs. That's it, Ryan. Hands up, buddy. Good. Use your arms. That's it. That's it, Matthew. Good work. That's it. Feed it in, Matthew. Just not as hard as you can go. Let him have a little bit. Good block. That's it. Get back in the Lift those legs. Good. Hands up. Hands up. Moving in. Good. Good. That's it, Ryan. Stay with it, Ryan. Use your legs. Matthew's got more size, so keep your arms up. Guide everything. Punch, kick. Good follow through. That's it. That's it, Matthew and Ryan. Okay, stop. Maybe second, quickly. Okay, bottom me. Bottom each other. Stay where you are, Matthew. Ryan, good job. Good job, Matthew. Sit down, Ryan. Hey, take one up. Okay. Same thing, but just a little bit more. Ready? Bottom eight. Bottom each other. Go! Use your legs. Remember, your arms and the legs should be used as much as each other. And uh, what, are, what are your children getting out of their training in the martial arts? Uh, Connor has learned a lot about discipline, a lot of focus. Um, he's had a lot of fun, and um, he's grown a lot because of what he's learned here. Thank you. 
Hi, my name is John Lenz. I'm Hunter Lenz's dad, and uh, he participates in the martial arts class with Sensei Ken. Excellent. Um, now, uh, what have you found that your child's received from his training in the martial arts? Um, it's provided him with a great discipline, along with a sense of accomplishment from his activities that he's been doing and learning from a day-to-day -day perspective here. So he thoroughly looks and enjoys his time with uh, his peers, along with learning how to grow his, uh, his skill set. All right, here we go. Do you say? My name is Kathy Lane. My son Joe is 11 years old and he's been in the martial arts class here at Schiff's Karate School for uh, at least four years now. And What does your child get out of the, his martial arts training? He is more focused with what he does. He um, has learned a lot of discipline through this. He's more confident in um, everything that he does and um, he totally enjoys doing this. Hi, my name is Debbie Lawton. My son Alex is 10 and he takes karate from Chef's Karate School. He's been here for about four and a half years. He enjoys coming. He comes three times a week, most weeks, and he's more focused, more confident. He's made a lot of good friends here. He loves um, the leadership of Ken. He um, really respects him and enjoys coming every time and he's very focused and determined in what he wants, he wants and he knows that he can't be bullied, he'll always back away from a fight first but if he has to, he can defend himself. What? 
more techniques, okay? Go around and get further and around here. You gotta move and strike, you gotta end that count, move to the side and strike, okay? Don't just keep backing up because he's just lining up, eventually he's gonna get him one round and kick after another. You move moving side to side, but you just can't, just, you just can't be moving, you gotta move and count, you gotta get in, and close the distance on him, okay? Alright? Good job, guys. That means, 
means that you really, in order to be a karate student master, you have to keep working your mind on focus, on being able to watch and be able to copy, right? We talked about this. Just keep reminding yourself that the harder you try to remember where your thumb is, your fingers are, what your feet are doing, the stronger your karate will be.